My name is James Lee. I'm a consultant gastroenterologist and clinician scientist at the University of Cambridge. On behalf of myself and my co-authors, I'm pleased to present this video abstract for our paper, A Blood-Based Prognostic Biomarker in Inflammatory Bowel Disease. This work represents the culmination of many years of work into better understanding the biology that determines prognosis in a range of immune-mediated diseases, including ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, which has been performed in Professor Ken Smith's lab at the University of Cambridge. In recent years, it's been widely recognised that the future of inflammatory bowel disease management needs to incorporate a personalised approach to therapy, in which the right patient is given the right treatment at the right time. This would ensure that patients destined to experience aggressive forms of the disease are able to receive the most potent therapies as early as possible, but just as importantly will ensure that those patients destined to experience milder forms of the disease are not exposed to the risks and side effects of unnecessary immunosuppression. So in previous years, we have identified a gene expression signature in CD8 T cells that is capable of accurately predicting prognosis in a range of immune-mediated diseases, including Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Unfortunately, this test isn't really suitable for use in clinical practice because it's just simply too complicated to be used on a day-to-day -day basis in hospitals. In this paper, what we've done is develop optimise and independently validate a whole blood test that can accurately predict prognosis in inflammatory bowel disease using just two and a half mils of blood. Excitingly, this test is already available for clinical use in patients through a spin-out company called Predictimmune. So to do this work, we identified a cohort of 69 IBD patients where we had both a CD8 T cell sample, and so we knew which prognostic subgroup they were in, and also a whole blood sample. What we then did was use machine learning to identify genes in the whole blood that will be able to accurately predict the CD8 T cell subgroups. Candidate genes were taken forward for qPCR optimization, and from that, we developed a 17 gene classifier, which we then locked down for further testing. We then recruited new cohorts of patients from around the UK who were newly diagnosed with either Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis in whom we could test the performance of this classifier. So in both of the independent validation cohorts, our classifier assigned every patient into one of two distinct subgroups. Irrespective of their underlying diagnosis, we found that patients in the IBD high subgroup, which is the group of patients who we would predict would have a poor prognosis, did indeed go on to have much more aggressive forms of ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. This was characterised by the need to escalate treatment both earlier and more frequently over time due to chronically active or frequently relapsing disease. This is best exemplified in the ulcerative colitis cohort, where the good prognosis subgroup required nothing more than an immunomodulator over the prospective follow-up period. In contrast, the poor prognosis subgroup required treatments ranging from anti-TNF to second-line biologics through to colectomy. This demonstrates that our 17 gene classifier is able to accurately predict the prognosis of inflammatory bowel disease from the time of diagnosis using just two and a half mils of blood. Importantly, this also demonstrates that the classifier is able to accurately identify the patients who do not require multiple treatment escalations, which is really important considering that the test would be used at the time of diagnosis. So to better understand the longer term consequences of being in either the high risk or the low risk subgroups, we went back and examined the phenotyping data that we'd been collecting for all the patients for whom we had a CD8 T cell sample. This cohort was now substantially larger than that that we previously reported on and also had substantially longer follow-up. So in the Crohn's disease cohort, high-risk patients had a much earlier requirement for escalation in treatment. And interestingly, this couldn't have been predicted using either clinical parameters or endoscopic features. Not only did these patients require an earlier treatment escalation, however, they also required many more treatment escalations over time, with the risk of needing escalation to a biologic being threefold higher than in the low-risk patients. Interestingly, all of the panproctocolectomies that needed to be performed were done in patients who were identified as being high-risk according to their gene expression profile. Similarly, in ulcerative colitis, Patients in the high-risk subgroup required both earlier treatment escalation and more frequent treatment escalation than patients in the low-risk subgroup. And strikingly, the only colectomies that were required in our cohort were in patients who were identified as being high-risk according to their gene expression profile. So in summary, we have developed optimised and independently validated a whole blood test that is able to predict prognosis in patients with ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. 
This is the first validated test in IBD that can be used at the time of diagnosis and compares very favorably in terms of its performance characteristics with tests that are already in use in oncology. This represents an important step towards personalized medicine in inflammatory bowel disease, and we hope will improve the care of patients in the future.